It's James here from GoodGuitarist.com and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play Love Story by Taylor Swift. Now this song can be played with a capo and with really basic chords, but in this version we're going to learn it without a capo and there's a couple bar chords, but the cool thing is I have a way around those bar chords so we can actually play it in a really easy way and without a capo. And this is actually what you'll see Taylor Swift doing. You'll see her, if she ever plays live on stage, playing acoustic guitar. Instead of playing bar chords like B and C sharp minor, she'll do what we're gonna do. You know, you might recognize that from the song Mean. You know, that type of sound. Now, if you're still working on the basics, like if you don't have your D and G chords and all those uh, down super well yet, or you're having trouble strumming, I have a couple resources for you. There's my free ebook, it's free for all my subscribers. And in that, we go over pretty much all the basics, chords, chord switching, different rhythm things, strumming patterns. And I also, if you wanna build on that, have a complete beginner's course. There's info on both of those down below. And with that, you'd be able to go pretty much wherever you wanna go with guitar. It's like the starting point. Anyways, we're gonna start off with the chord shapes. And our first one is a D chord. And from the D chord, we're gonna to switch to G. And then our next chord is B minor. And this can be a bar chord. And if you're already familiar with that, I recommend playing it this way. This is the best way to do it, but it's also the harder way to do it. An easier way is to take your first finger, place it on the second fret of the A string. That's the fifth string. Then take your third finger, your ring finger. See my ring? That's my ring finger. I put it on the fourth fret of the next string. So that's on the D string. So I have these two notes so far. And then I'm gonna take my pinky, my last finger, and put it right underneath my ring finger. Just squeeze it in there. It's also on the fourth fret. Now this is gonna be our chord shape. And we can either just play these three notes, or we can also just kinda of get all of them except for the lowest string. You want to avoid that one, but otherwise, it's fine. Whether you're muting these ones or leaving them open, it'll sound great in the context of the song. And this is how we're working around the B minor chord. And you'll actually see Taylor Swift use these chord shapes a lot on stage. And um, even in the song Mean, you know, she uses this chord shape all over the place. She just moves it like. And last, we have an A chord. That's pretty straightforward. Now before we practice playing the chords in order, let's take a look at some switching tips. So we're starting off on the D chord, and our next one's G. When we switch from D to G, we can leave our third finger down and switch to the G chord. So see how I'm leaving that finger down? That just makes it one bit easier to switch between those two chords. Next, after the G, that's where we have that B minor chord. And when I switch from G to B minor, I could take all my fingers off and start from scratch, but it's easier to leave your first finger down, turn it so that it's you know in the right position, and then get these two fingers down. 
And then from there, we'd go back to G. So we just reverse it. So it might be worth it to just practice going from B minor to G. That's probably gonna be the hardest part for you since the rest of it, you know, they're open chords that you see in like everything. And this is more of a bar chord thing. You know, we're preparing to get into bar chords. This is how I do it with a lot of my students. Last but not least, we have that A chord and the A chord comes also after a B minor. So we'd be on B minor and then we just switch to A and that one, there's really no, no trick to it. So you also should be working on going between those two chords. You don't even have to strum them every time. You can just silently switch, get your fingers in the right spots, you know, and just help build up that muscle memory. Anyways, once you do feel comfortable making the switches between these chords, doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to be somewhat capable of doing it. When you're ready, we can practice strumming through them with downstrokes only. So we're gonna keep the rhythm part really easy. We're just gonna focus on making nice clean chord switches. Starting off on the D chord, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna switch to G, pivot on that finger. Yep. Going to B minor, first finger, pivot. Nice. One, two, back to G. And starting at D again. Alright, so once you can do that, once you can make nice clean chord switches, we're ready to take a look at the rhythm for this one. And there's actually two strumming patterns. One of them is super simple and the other one's the most common one ever. So chances are you've probably seen these already if you've learned a couple other songs. Um, anyways, the first one is what I play and what is being played on the recording during the intro and during the first verse when the song's really quiet. And all we're doing there just this, just down strokes only. We have to palm mute, so we take our palm and we overlap a little bit of the string, not too much, kills the string entirely, and if you don't do enough of it, you're not palm muting, right? You have to do a little bit, and it gives you a nice, you know, dull sound, it's really cool. And we just do that with our chord progression counting, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and super easy. Just remember to count so you get, get it the right number of times. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So I recommend pausing the video and trying that right now. You could even rewind it to where we were just playing the chords with downstrokes, but instead, you know, try to do that and see if you can get a good feeling for it. And then once you have that, we can look at the next strumming pattern, which is the most common strumming pattern ever. It goes like this. I'll do it a little bit slower now. Three and four and. And the best way to learn that one is to divide it into two parts. So first we have down, down, up. Three, four. So just do that a whole bunch of times. Second half is miss up, down, up. Miss up, down, up. One, two, miss up, down, up. And it's really important to say that miss, you know, and you miss all the strings because that's a main beat. And since we're missing all the strings on a main beat, we don't really get a chance to feel it unless we're tapping our foot or saying miss, or you know, doing some way to physically acknowledge that downbeat. Because if it's missing, it just feels really wonky and the up, the up strokes won't line up properly. Anyways, once you do each of those halves a whole bunch of times, they're really simple on their own. You can practice putting it together super duper slowly. Three and four and down, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, down, up, miss, up, down, up. And you have to
to be able to play it many times in a row on a single chord. Because if you have trouble playing it a bunch of times in a row on just one chord, it's going to really fall apart when you try to play it over a bunch of different chord shapes and you know, you're switching chords and then you're doing that. We're putting a lot of things together when we're playing guitar, you know, a lot of different coordination things. So you have to work out each one really well before you can put them all together or else it's just going to be really, really tricky. Anyways, with that said, once you have taken a look at the chords and you're decent with the chords, you have your strumming pattern down, we can try putting this together now slower than the original recording. You can keep rewinding it, take as many tries as you want. Here we go. One, two, three, four. For the pre-chorus, it's pretty much the same thing. Same chord shapes, they're just in a different order. But otherwise, same chords, same strumming pattern. Now the one thing we need to take a look at is the very end. There's a G and an A chord, and they're sharing a measure. And that means that they're sharing a strumming pattern. And we can either just put the first half of the strumming pattern over the G chord, second half over the A chord, like this. So I'm going, down, down, up on the G, and then I go miss, up, down, up on the A chord. But I feel it's actually better if we just do the first half of the strumming pattern over both of them. So down, down, up, down, down, up. I think that sounds a lot better. It gives it like a downbeat and just makes the chords stand out a bit more. Either way, just pick one, stick with it. We're gonna be playing through the pre-chorus the order's a bit different here, so you might want to just watch it first and then rewind it and try it yourself. Totally up to you. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Next up is the chorus, and this is even easier than the pre-chorus. It's super straightforward. We're just strumming through some chords. Once again, the order's a bit different, but it's really simple. So let's just try it. You can watch it, rewind it, and try it yourself if you just want to see me do it first. Totally up to you. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now you might have noticed there at the end of the chorus I went back to just doing this and they just do that for two measures of D one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and then it goes back into the verse so it's just like a little interlude or some transition part super duper simple just palm eating on a D chord um, the only other part we have left now is the bridge and I'm gonna sound like a broken record here but same chords, same strumming pattern, different order. Let's just try it. Uh, you can watch, rewind, do that whole thing. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now that's enough stuff to play through this whole song. And if you were to go play it at like a party or around a campfire or whatever, everybody would be like, yeah, great, that sounds like love story. But there's one thing at the very end that makes this song 
a bit more challenging, it's a key change. So after the um, bridge, there's a breakdown chorus where they just go like Romeo, dun, 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 just one strum on each chord. Dun, dun, dun. And after that, they do a key change. You know, after he pulls out a ring and then they say, and they start playing the song in a different key, in the key of E. So for this, we'd need to learn some new chords. Let's just take a super quick look at it. It starts off on the E chord. Then it goes to our B chord. And this time it's gonna be B major. So you could play B major if you're ready for it. Otherwise, you can just use our little cheater chord here. Then we go up two frets. So one, two. Our first finger should be on the fourth fret. You can just count one, two, three, four. That's called C sharp minor. You know, you could play a C sharp minor. We're gonna do it like that. And then we go to an A chord. So from our C sharp minor, we just go one, two, three, down four times. So I know normally we'd be playing it like that. Here we're playing A sus two, we're using different fingers, but it's so easy to make that transition. And we have to go from A up into B really quickly, and it's easier than this. You know, this is the hard way to do it. This is the easy way. So for the very last chorus, if you want, you can do that key change. I'll just play through it once so you can see what the whole thing is going to sound like. Um, here we go. One, two, three, four. So that's how you play Love Story by Taylor Swift. Now, like I mentioned before, you can completely ignore that key change at the end and just play the chorus the normal way in the key of D a whole bunch of times and end the song that way and it sounds totally fine. But if you wanna make it sound exactly like the recording, you can do that key change. And as I've shown throughout this entire thing, we can play this song without any bar chords. Obviously, playing it with the bar chords is going to be better, and in the future, if you want to pursue guitar, you're definitely going to want to learn to play your bar chords, and this would be a good song to revisit, because a lot of bar chords put your hand in this shape already, then you just kind of add some notes to it. So this is really good preparation for bar chords. Either way, if you need any extra help with this stuff, remember I have my free ebook and I have my complete beginner's course. Have a good time practicing, and I'll see you soon.